Welcome back, folks, to episode 9 of Age of Lemuria. We are back, and I'm your host, Lucan, and we are going to get started. Uno, who are hey. you? Hello. Nobody's seen you before. Who are you? Uh, my name is Uno. Uh, I, I play D&D sometimes. Find me on Twitter at Unodus. That's it. That's all I got. That's all you got. You need to, you need to expand more. You need to have like your own YouTube channel and everything else. <laughs> you get as famous as uh, like PewDiePie and shit. <laughs> yeah. Let's go. Make millions of dollars. Oh, we have a new face <laughs> with us today. Kieran, why don't you to, yeah. uh, tell us a little bit about yourself? Uh, not a lot to tell. Uh, Unadus brought me in. Uh, I have a YouTube channel, but <laughs> it's just for watching videos, you know. So, me and Kieran know each other because we used to do yeah. D&D in real life. Uh, I took a like few months break from it and thought I'd give it a go and again. Well, welcome yeah, back to the D and D world. Welcome back. I'm sure everybody's Ooh. glad that you're here. All right. So we're going to go ahead and get started. Scene opens, and we've got like the uh, Game of Thrones entrance. -na 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 -na. And we go over this map, right? And we see this jade rainforest. This is a map of Lemuria, the world that we exist in. Um, uh, it goes over the jade rainforest and down into the Gulf of Dracana. And then it crosses the Mountains of Fire and down through the endless desert. You know, whoosh, like this big area pan. And then it crosses over into the Golden Plains where it rests on the skull right here. Zooms down into it. And, and then we have someone over. else joining. Oh, Christie's back. Ah, oh, just in time. <laughs> Only and seven everything. minutes or six minutes past the minute he wanted. <laughs> and then zooms down into the Silver hey. Mountains. Hello, hello. Hey. <laughs> Sorry. Hey. This is my fiance, Chris. Mom. Interesting. Hey. Hello, hello, Chris. Hey. We're doing introductions. Hey, Chris. Hey. Good timing. Good timing. We were trying our best. You know. uh, tell us a little bit about yourself. Well, no, sorry about, sorry for um having some um eating some candy right now. Oh, anyways, we were eating pizza uh, and stuff earlier, so you're good. You're yeah. Good. Well, you know, I'm Chris. I'm Christy's fiance. You know, I play D and D every now and then with a friend of mine. Me with some friends of mine, but we haven't done it in so long that I don't know anymore. You know. You don't okay. Know anymore? Okay. All right. Well, we're going to start with a anything. brand new character sheet. Uh, let's see here. Let's go ahead and add. Oh um, no! More character creation. <laughs> yes. So, folks at home, welcome to character creation. Do you have a concept <laughs> you have in mind? On uh, me? Yeah. Oh. Well. I already have a character that I've made a long a while back. Uh, do you want to upload it? Uh, I don't know how. On the, I don't know how on this. this is the first time I've used I've uh, been used I've used this. Okay. Uh, uh, so, are you pen and paper? Are you set? Ready? Mostly, she just said here, and then she ran off. <laughs> well, that's 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 great. Oh, I yeah. just dub you off at the. Uh, yeah. <laughs> okay. All right. Um, so uh, this is Lemuria. We were just discussing it. This is a land yeah. of uh, fantasy, uh, dragons and stuff like that. Do you see the map before you? Okay. Um, do you see the map? This is yes. uh, Lemuria, the oh. lands that we are currently in. Are you okay? You guys see me? I do, yes. Hi. Okay. We can see you. <laughs> you the light, close the yeah, the lights. The light is uh, definitely... The light, it burns. Ah. Uh, a little more. Oh, I can't. <laughs> Run the other way. Is that a new... Oh, no, that's a handout. 
Add character. Oh, my handouts. Yay! Of course. What's out of that? Uh, it'll be under Christy. This would be a new character. Christy. Uh, do, 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 and save. Give me just a sec, guys. New character. Okay, while they are getting ready, I will continue the description of the lands. Uh, mm -hmm. The camera pans over the Silver Mountains. And uh, the Silver Mountains uh, are frosty and uh, covered in ice. And then it goes up and into the Black Marshes and crosses the uh, Straits of Drakon before coming back to where our adventurers are. And you see here... Uh, Jeffrey just got done talking to this mysterious figure. Uh, Uno, do you want to uh, tell us what happened last time? Uh, <laughs> so, last time <laughs> on Adrian it's very it's last time. We set off from Farmer Ed's house and embarked on a grand and dangerous journey through the Great Golden Plains to find the city. Oh, it's not hard to find. Uh, the city of Alkaline, which is right here. City of Alkaline. Oh, okay. yes, that's what I meant. The city of Alkaline is a massive uh, superstructure that can be seen. It's like a mountain in the middle of the, of the plains. It is made out of iron. Uh, yes. And it is uh, rusting. And you guys can see it from here. Even if you're... You see here, so that's... <laughs> couple like two three hundred leagues away but this is a super structure that you can see wait yeah. is this city to scale so like uh, it's miles yeah. yeah this is a population miles high. of over uh no not mile well it'd be like a mountain so i guess miles yeah you're heading towards the metropolis of of uh, the world okay. this is a super okay. city uh yeah uh, Hel Hellenistic spiral spires and uh, uh, tops is what you can see from here. So it's all very Greek appearance. Hooray! Hey. Hey, I made it. Hey. Oh, yay! Welcome hey. back. I see you. We had to move it upstairs. <laughs> yeah, we had to get upstairs. There was too much hassle. Mm -hmm. Understandable. Understandable. Uh, not not Hasselhoff. The the other kind of hassle. <laughs> Uh, we have a new character for you guys. Uh, it's under the character wow. sheets. If you go into uh, yes, yes. handouts and stuff. You have the sheet. Under journal. Oh, well, I made it. have a new character. Or would you like to pick up from where you were? Um, you want to start a new game? Well, it's okay. not a new game. You're entering already into a safe spot. Got it. Yeah. All right. Think of it as multiplayer, and you're just entering into it. Oh, <laughs> Wherever we're, where I was. Yeah. So Mud Skipper is still there. Uh, she's helping to uh, cut up this boar. Nodren's there as well, and he's uh, helping out as well. Jeffrey's currently off in the darkness talking to some stranger, and there's another oh, yeah. uh, stranger approaching the campfire. That's what we call stranger it. approaching another the campfire. stranger. So there's all these strangers diverging on this campfire. It's in the <laughs> strangers everywhere. Yeah, strangers, stranger danger. Stranger danger. Everywhere. Yeah, night of the living dead. Let's go. Yep. Out of fire. Okay. Uh, so, uh, did you guys access the new character? Oh. Uh, should be under control of. Oh my gosh. Sorry. What did you? Just flew out into the golden plains. Oh. <clears throat> so that's where the adventurers currently are. So should I describe Adron, I guess? Uh, Just to get us set up? 
should we first make character sheet or should we go into the game? I know. I don't know. Are we? I know. Uh, uh, I don't so, know. are we making a new character, or are we picking up where Mudskip left off? No. Uh, what? What was that? You faded out. Oh, uh, I was saying I thought we were just gonna pick up where she left off. Sure. Yeah. Uh, so you will be playing Mudskip. Uh, right there. Let's get the Sorcerer Dragonborn. Yes, uh, she is currently level two. So if you'd like to level her up, uh, do you guys? Have you, you guys haven't played it in a long time. Would you like assistance in this, Audrey? Uh, Uno, would you like to help me on this? Sure, I can help. Let's have a look at what sorcerers get at level two. Yeah. Uh, all hit dice are max, so it's a d6, I believe, which I believe your hit points are currently at 14. Uh, AC is currently 15. Uh, I think they're Blood Awakens, isn't it? Uh, you get a thing called Font of Magic, yeah. which means you get sorcery points, and sorcery points are a resource that you can use in correspondence to your spells. Yes. Okay. So at level two, you have two sorcery points. Uh, so so kind of like your life force, your energy, your, you excel in this. You know spell slots, I assume? Oh, I know it was Firebolt last time. Okay. Um, okay. Do you have Firebolt? What else do you have? I also have like a disguise sort of thing with a necklace. Yes. Magic bolts, a uh, blade ward, uh, light, prestidigitation, sleep, the sky itself, uh, ringing a bell. <laughs> Excellent. Uh, they get another spell, correct? At level one. Uh, level two. Level two. Is, yeah, you get one more spell. You memorize a whole new spell. Uh, what type of spell would you like? I believe it's level one, right? Level one, one more spell. Yep. So, so just to give you what about a shield. Example, that's a good one. Shield is a spell. Shield is amazing. Mm -hmm. So shield grants you another plus five AC, and it's at a reaction, correct? And you become immune to magic missile for that turn. Nice. Yeah, that's the only way to counter magic missile. <laughs> yeah, magic missile is pretty potent and fairly common. Yeah. Oh, that reminds me. I need to do bardic spells. Yes. Go ahead and do that. Shield. It is. No one would notice. Aberration. Uh, these noobs don't even pick their spells before the game. <laughs> <laughs> what a bunch of noobs! They're just wanting to play. <laughs> I don't understand. There we go. For me, I haven't, for me, I haven't done this in months, so I kind of forgot how. It's so long. Anything this a, else? So, level two. I think that's uh, it. Do you want to explain flex, flexible casting, I guess? Uh, so, uh, you can change your spells. Uh, like, you don't have to choose one select spell. So unlike a wizard, a wizard has to prep their spells, and they have to cast it in order, right? So if I get five fireballs ready, that's all I can cast for that day, right? You, as a sorcerer, have the innate ability to pick and choose your spells. So I want to cast fireball, I want to cast shield, I want to cast this, I want to cast that. You get to pick within your repertoire. You have less um, options but you get to cast them how you see fit. Does that make sense? Is that... Uh-oh. Did I just lose connection? Uh-oh. 
I don't know. There we go. Oh, there he is. Oh, there he is. All right. I was like, hey, oh, no. Uh, so where did I leave off at? Fireballs. You can only yeah. have five fireballs. fireballs. Let's say that you, your spell limit is five fireballs, right? So as a wizard, I prepare five uh, fireballs, right? However, as a sorcerer, within those spell slots, you can choose, like, I want to cast a uh, shield, fireball, fireball, shield. So you can actually switch it up, unlike a wizard who has a set uh, prepared spells. Um, wizards get more, though. Wizards get more. Yeah, obviously. Yep. So but they I have was... to prepare them. I was talking oh, you more about the... Doing that? Oh, okay. Converting spell slots into spell point into sorcerer points and sorcerer points into spell slots. Oh, she be gone. I oh, know she just more daisy in. Okay, that's fine. Uh, let's see here. Uh, so yeah, that is spontaneous casting, I believe, for sorcerer. Uh, spontaneous. What were you talking about, Uno? You're talking about the sorcerer points, which is kind of like key for monks, right? You can convert. Yeah, power them sorcerer up. Points. Yeah, so you you can do special things with your your points. Um, I believe you said only two, starting off with two. Um, so with these points, let's see here. Don't want to get them wrong. I want to fall them and copy and paste them into it. Okay, spell points. <clears throat> nope, nope, nope. That's not it. I believe you can power stuff up, right? You can power them. Um, that's at level three and stuff. Oh, okay. Uh, so wisdom, spontaneous casting, regaining spell points. So in order to get your uh, spell points back, you have to rest. Uh, I believe it's a long rest, which means eight hours or more. Casting spells at higher levels. Not really. In game wise. Everybody's a spell caster. Everybody's. So uh, anti-magic, everybody's gone. <laughs> uh, let me see here. It's the now. <laughs> points uh you get, once you get feats i guess you can do multiple, multiple things oh this is five three point five totally looking at the wrong stuff all right so it's a one-to-one -one conversion no it's one and a half so one point f one point Three points as the advancement. Also, spells cost money. Uh, Wait, what? Yeah, spells cost money if it's above something. It but, doesn't. Uh, I'm going to trust you guys to not always be casting resurrection. <laughs> um, let's see here. Sorcerer, yay, I finally got it. All right, uh, equipment. Spell slots, first level higher. Sorcerer Origins, we've already got that. Fountain of Magic. At second level, you tap into the deep wellspring of your magic within you. This wellspring is represented by sorcerer points, which allows you to create various magical effects. So I'm going to copy and paste this in. You have two sorcerer points. You gain an additional point every time you level up to a maximum of 20 at level 20. You can never have more sorcerer points than shown on the table at your level. You regain all spent sorcerer points after a long rest. So this allows you to do one, flexible casting, 
You can use your sorcery points to gain additional spell slots or sacrifice spell slots to gain additional sorcery points. You learn other ways to use your sorcery points as you reach higher levels. So currently, you can just trade them for spells. Just at level 2. But further on, they become more powerful and you can do more stuff. So at level 2, uh, you have 2 sorcery points. And for a first level spell, it costs you 2 points. So it literally gives you one more free spell that you can cast. Does that make sense? Yeah. Uh, but it gets more powerful once you hit level 3 and level 5. That makes sense. Uh, and, for the, and so on and so forth. So currently, uh, this allows you to do that. Oh my gosh. It allows you to do quicken spell too. Oh my gosh, this is some cheese. Uno, this is some cheese here. I don't know if I like this, but yeah. <laughs> yeah, you get you get really powerful at level three. So try to survive to level three. I'm going to, to a cadaver. copy and paste this into uh, your character sheet. Uh, so the cheesy but the squishy. That allows you to do some really cool stuff. And then edit. Then paste. It's in your. Uh, you should have an avatar too. Why don't you have an avatar? Dragonborn. There we are. There we go. There we go, Mudkip. There we go. That's kind of weird that that didn't save, but now everything is good. Okay. Are we ready? Restart the intro. <laughs> Restart the intro. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> folks. Sorry. <laughs> okay. We open it up uh, to the map of Lemuria. Uh, we come down upon the Golden Plains, and everything opens up again. And we get an aerial shot of the Black Marshes, the Jade Rainforest, the Endless Desert, uh, Endless Ice, the Mountains of Fire. Uh, and then we come back around to the Golden Plains and we zoom in on this campfire where we see Mud Skipper and Audrin sitting around harvesting uh, this boar, this massive boar. Uh, Jeffrey, of course, wanders off into the shadows and who knows what happens to him. Uh, a shadowy figure approaches. Uh, Karen, would you like to introduce yourself to these two strange beings clearly carving up this wild boar. Over fire? fire? You see a three foot cool. run about tall human girl walk out of uh, like darkness. She's carrying a lantern. She's got a ferret wrapped around her neck. She's got like a laden down with a big backpack with a instrument and a strapped across the back and a crossbow on the side. Hello there. You see this strange girl entering into a campfire. This is an oddity because this child is in the middle of the Golden Plains where you know it's clearly dangerous. You guys ran into wild animals a knoll pack. I mean, this is this is definitely weird. Not yeah, she normal. stands there looking a little bit confused, like blinking at you. So, Adron will turn around, and that is when you see the large red blindfold across his face, because he is a human, dark hair, wearing a, a, a hooded robe, uh, blindfold, and a walking stick. And an owl on his shoulder with red glowing eyes. Oh my, are your eyes okay? Oh, you have an owl. Oh, look, I have a ferret. Perhaps they can be friends. Yum, yum. The owl just sort of like, <laughs> looks hungry. Oh. Yeah. The owl has a golden monocle. Ooh, fancy. <laughs> are you lost? Hello? Well... You could say I'm lost. You could also say I'm where I want to be, which is lost. Or 
Maybe. <laughs> you want to be lost? Okay. Uh, no, I don't want to be lost per se, but I got lost. So at some point I must have wanted to be lost, otherwise I wouldn't be lost. Right? <laughs> okay. Uh, my name's Adrian, and this is Mudskipper. We're just oh. you know, we're heading oh, down to hello. the city of Alkaline. You know where the city is? Ooh. Oh yeah, you can come along. Oh, the distance. She, she looks very disconcerted, disconcerted by this. She just stares at the city for a while. Oh, there it is. <laughs> fancy leave, fancy that being there. Uh, so we get a screenshot of this massive superstructure off in the distance, still a long ways away, uh, at least a week away, depending on the weather. And your rolls. <laughs> um, this massive superstructure has like orbs of light uh, glowing around it, as if bathed in holy light. Mm, However, the iron rust makes it look bloody. Yeah. So where are you? Where are you heading to? Uh. Wherever I'm heading to, I guess. I'm not sure. It's more about where I'm heading from, I guess. It's a scary place, but I'm heading from it now, so it's fine. Okay. Uh, would you like some boar? There's so much. There's too much for us to pull three. But oh, yes, please. Yeah, she sits down at the fire and holds out her hands. A grin on her face. <laughs> All right, I guess I'll start serving some boar. Adron is a master chef, apparently. The camera turns and looks at uh, Mudskip. What is she doing? What does she look like? What does Mudskip look like? For people who've never <laughs> seen her before. Mudskip is a dra dragon boar, sorceress. Um, Basically, she is a wandering hermit, you know, just trying to get to the next town to get supplies. They won't be able to cut. It took us a long time to carve up this, to attack this boar because it would stop attacking. So even though I'm a, I'm a dragon boar and I'm pretty squishy. Well, you're a lot tougher now. That's your level two. You've gained. Um, quite a bit of experience from that last encounter uh you are much more uh, wise in your sense of uh, protection uh tell me about this spell that you remember or recall from your draconic heritage so shield yes was um Dragon Draconic Resilience? Uh, yes. You currently have Draconian Resilience. Your skin is very uh, uh, scaly. <laughs> Extra scales. Extra scales on top of your dragon boring. Yep. But now, as you recall the boar charging you, you remember this uh, ancient blood uh, calling of a past dragon. Uh, that grants you this ability to cast a shield uh, during this time. Okay. All right. I know I was knocked out unconscious. Uh, yep. The bull. I mean, from the boar. Boar charged you and hit you hard, real hard. Mm -hmm. I'm still recovering. Uh, yes. Uh, so, what, if anything, are you guys doing? Um, I'm guessing... Eating boar? Uh, so <laughs> yeah, I'm guess... in, passing out boar and whatever's left trying to jerky it up for the next couple of days. <laughs> uh, I want everyone so... to roll me a perception as Jeffrey comes back into the campfire. We have my Al roll his perception. Yes. <laughs> Good start. 
Why have you wandered off, Jeffrey? Uh. A lot safer around this campfire than anywhere else. That's a pretty good roll. I didn't catch your name, small child. You fed me up. She you... grins at you. Yeah. Euthemia? Yeah. That's an odd name. Um, yeah. Yeah. Uh, so Jeffrey no longer has these uh, Noel tales, which he collected last time, strung around him. And uh, let's see here. Let's see these rolls. Natural t t t 20. Um, uh, let's see here. Uh, Christy, are, are you going to roll perception? You currently have a believe a minus one. Perception, okay. Yep. So it's slash roll one D twenty. Uh, so Mudskip doesn't notice this. She's enjoying uh, her meal with a boar. Uh, however, uh, Karen and Audrin uh, both notice uh, there's a large bag of coins at the at his hip belt. Uh, mm. Yeah, he's like, uh, "Is any of the, uh, you guys saving some of that boar for me?" He comes over and sits down by the fire. Uh, this young man uh, does not have a left uh, hand, and a bloody stub <laughs> is missing. It's not my fault. It's not my fault. So he got appears got to be 18 to 20 wizard. years old. So we've got a blind wizard and a poacher without one hand. Seems good. He had a hand before we met him. <laughs> uh, All right. He nods yeah, um, to you guys. And begins eating I, the boar. He's just like... So, Adrian Euphemia waves her hands, like, really big. <laughs> Adrian puts a hand on he waves back. Uh, his shoulder. It's like, what happened to all of your um, tails? Where are all those noise tails? I, uh, uh, I, uh, sold them. The who? Oh, I, I met a... I, I, I met a traveling salesman. In the middle of the night. I, uh, you found a child. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I found at, them. Yeah. Uh, like, me a smile. So like you're not the only ones that with friends. With that, he pats oh. his gold, uh, his coin purse. How much money yeah. did you make? Uh, he, he's like he's gonna, mm, just a go, just a couple of copper. Raining in and out. Insight. Yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, definitely insight that. I'm gonna be insightful as the wizard. Yeah, be insightful. Okay. Uh, so from the smirk, like you've seen this uh, thief, you've had the most interaction with him. Uh, you know that that's more than just a couple, a couple of copper. Uh, that's that's probably a, a pound of something, but you're not quite sure what's inside of it. So he's clearly lying to you, by the way. He's like, oh, a couple of copper. No, no, that's more than a couple of copper. As a that's clear, more than a couple of copper, Geoffrey. He's like, well, obviously. Too. Hey, hey, it was my hard work that got the Noel tales. I'm just lucky to find a, a, a good good buyer. Well, yeah. I guess I, it's not that big a deal then. So. He nods in agreement uh, and keeps eating his pork. Um, um, you see, Matt, do you want to spend the night here, I guess? You guys want to travel at night? Well, no, we're camping, I assume. 
He looks over at Mudkip, who still is covered in blood from the boar goring her. Yeah. Yeah, let's camp. Would it be all right if I stayed here? He, like, looks well, around. Just... He's like, sure. I mean, it's it's not safe for you to go alone, I think. It'd be better if we were all together. Safety in numbers. Okay, sweet. Yeah. yeah. And with that, Euphemia just, like, kind of rests her head next to her ferret, like, on her shoulder, and falls asleep in, like, one minute. Oh, boy. Uh, before you fall asleep, I want you to roll me a perception as uh, Jeffrey eyeballs your ferret. Mm. <laughs> I could oh. the... You go to sleep? Yeah, I just go to sleep. Mm. Sounds yeah. good. So, uh, not, does anybody going... have anything else to do? Yeah, yeah. So... Christy doesn't see anything either. No one noticed an to... incredibly suspicious looking thief looking at anything. I love my opposition. Uh, yeah, Audrin, because you, of course, have been with this guy for so long, you notice that the, uh, that Jeffrey's eyeballing the skin of the ferret. Don't steal a lot of people's ferrets. I mean, like, he's, like, weighing, like, hmm, I could probably get a good price, uh, that type of, like, hmm, yeah. Jeffrey, you've already lost one hand. Then let me take the other. Jeez. Uh, he kind of like shivers at your, uh, I don't know, jest? I don't know. <laughs> I mean, you were there when he got his hand cut off, so. <laughs> okay. It wasn't my fault. I, uh, do you say that to him? No. Okay. <laughs> like, Gallows humor. All right. Okay. What are Let's... you guys going to do next? So this is the next morning. Are you guys going to sleep? I'm going to go sleep. Yeah. sleep. Uh, is anybody yeah. standing yeah. watch? Uh, I'll stand watch as many hours as I can, I guess. Okay. Yeah. You okay. only need eight hours. Uh, it's 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 only like oh, eight okay. nine o'clock. So uh, if you guys quarter it in shifts. So, so between... a third, a third, a third. Sound good? Okay. That sounds good. Right. Sleeping order? Uh, well, you guys need to figure that out because nothing happens that night. <laughs> what? 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 Okay, so Adron has some dreams for the night. Yeah, go ahead and roll me that... Uh... Freaky ass vision. <laughs> no dreams come to you tonight, my friend. There's. Uh... I see terrible things in your future. <laughs> I'll keep sleep, no wonder. No, you're just tired, man. You're just tired. Like the boar fight, dodging the boar, trying to hit you. You're just exhausted. Yeah. And you, you have a sleepless night. It's yeah. not easy, you know? Okay. Uh, so where are you guys heading? Uh, so... Team, I've, I've been thinking. We could be walking Morning all the way to the But I'm noticing there is also a river. What if we tried to catch a boat? Is that something we could try to consider doing? I might say... Yeah, there are barges that go up and down. There definitely are What barges. do you think? Yeah. Want to take a barge? I've been on a boat before. It looks fun. I reckon I've got enough money to cover a journey for all of us. And we're obviously we've got a horse as well. And a wagon. And a wagon. Full of something. What is it full of? <laughs> Do you want me to list it, I guess? Uh yeah. Go ahead. So a master <coughs> uh longbow. It's chain mail. Alchemist kit, six scimitars, six light crossbows, a damaged scroll, a shield, a morning star, uh, leather armor, and that's it. 
Uh, don't forget the honey ale. And some honey ale. Yep. You have, the honey is down. You have 10 kegs of honey ale. All in the back of this wagon. Well, well, we're delivering them, you know. Yeah. So, we got these from a bandit who tried to rob us. Just lots of armor, lots of swords. We can sell money. I like money. Money is good. Yeah. So basically, after he tried to rob us, we robbed him. Well, it's not point just leaving it there. It's only fair. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so if we go sort of due south. Okay. Go ahead and move your self. Where are you guys going? So, like. Oof. Roll me a survival. Hey. Who is rolling? All of us? Uh, just one I, person. I... One person rolls survival. This is the leader that's showing the path. Oh, plus three. That'd probably be. Drum. What I've seen. Game. Excellent. Uh, would you like to do some crazy wizard magic stuff? <laughs> no. I don't. But I do have a new feat called Keen Mind, and that lets me. I can accurately recall anything I've seen in the herb last month. I know how exactly how many hours it'll be to the next sunrise or sunset, and I always know which direction is north. So Excellent. it's very difficult to get lost. Yes. Uh, so you guys are not lost. Your progress is slowed by rain. It is still springtime, and stuff starts to turn soupy. It's a light drizzle. Uh, it's not a horrible weather, but you make slow progress. Like a drizzle, kind of, right? Yep. Uh, you are in the Golden Plains, and one of the Golden Plains features is that uh, whenever it rains hard, especially in the spring, it becomes a big old swamp. And it's very, very uh, difficult to travel on, at least via road. You guys are kind of cross country in this. Okay. That makes sense, man. Uh, so you guys finally make it to the river of Cisna. What, if anything, do you do? Try and find so, a barge, I guess. Right. Roll me a perception. Yeah, just as we would. That would be a good, a good idea. That's mm -hmm. uh, stormy, right? It's light drizzle, so it'll be a little bit difficult. Adrian, mm -hmm. you stayed up late last night. You don't see much. You're just kind of falling asleep in the back of the wagon. Anybody else? How long are you guys going to Sammy wait? On it. There we go. Anybody else? Uh, I mean, we could just sort of walk down the river until we see a barge coming down the way we want to go. Well, currently sort of you're falling asleep in the back of the <laughs> wagon. Okay. But Euphenia, Euphenia sees uh, a, a, a barge in the middle of the river. What do you do, Athenia? It's kind of uh, blocked by the haze. <laughs> it's a good question. If this was like normal D&D &D without oppressive magic rules. Ah, I don't know. I guess I like shove a mud kip who I assume I'm sitting next to and say, look, there's a barge on the river. I, how do we like stop it from moving? But it is currently going upriver. Yeah, Euphemia doesn't care about that. Okay. Um. Well, if it's going upriver, we probably won't be able to persuade. Well, we, can we try calling out? Oh, uh, sure. Out to them? How are you? Doing this? Don't forget, it's in the middle of a pretty big, massive river. It's it's not deep. It's wide. Right. And these are barges. Okay, Euphemia is gonna shout out, "Hey, Mister, stop, stop!" Sounds good. Roll me a con save as you're shouting and cross. Is anybody going to help her? I'll help. Okay. Like, 
Shouting. You will give advantage. How are you doing this, Audrin? Uh, I'm also like clapping and shouting and maybe like... Uh, because of the rain maybe. and drizzle, uh, the barge just keeps going. And not, for, not, not long, the barge is out of sight. <clears throat> oh, that's yeah. rude. I mean, they don't see you or hear you. <laughs> and you're like on the shore trying to flag them down. An hour passed by. What do you do next? Looks sad. Walking down, if we keep walking down the river, the river will basically lead us into town. So it's very unlikely that we get lost, I imagine. Okay, so you guys are going to continue to travel? Yeah, just down the river. Okay. I'll go ahead and uh, roll me a survival. Is anybody assisting you? They want to assist me. Will I survive? Does anybody want to assist me? <laughs> We're slowly losing our way. We're going into the river, guys. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, so uh, uh, it doesn't think. sound like anybody's assisting you, so I think a nine. Uh, so you guys get stuck in the mud and make no progress. You're right next to the river, and it's raining, and the mud on the side of the banks is starting to get clogged. And you guys are like, yeah, and you make no progress. Night comes. What do you guys do? Hmm. What if we... Could we try and make a barge? Us in here. Uh, you have not seen any more barges today. Mm. That's not a common thing. Mm. I think I've got a shovel from the farm. Uh, did you bring it with you? <laughs> I don't know. I don't think so. <laughs> Oh dear. Let me just check all of my inventory. Do you have adventurer's equipment? You can declare, I believe, something less than five pounds. I do have a backpack. Let me just check what's inside them. Okay. Okay. So, Audrin opens up his backpack of adventuring equipment. Doesn't, doesn't mention it. <laughs> Uh, are you declaring this object as part of your adventuring oh. equipment? Assuming that you have adventuring equipment. Yeah, I do. It's just okay. I don't know if I wrote I just wrote down backpack. Well, write that down. Uh, as a shovel. Right, shovel. shovel. Yep. Okay. Anyone want to give me a hand? Uh, the... In order to dig this cart out in a reasonable time, you will need to roll a strength check. Guys, I am not the strongest, I'm gonna be honest. Because you're physically digging stuff up, so. Anyone good with shovels? Hypothetically? Is Mudskin a... strong? Hmm. Euphemia's just going to, like, kind of tap out a tune on the cart. She's getting a bit bored. Sounds giving good. you bardic inspiration. Excellent. Good <laughs> <laughs> I am. Okay, Mudskip, why don't you roll with advantage uh, a strength check. So you're going to roll 1d20 and then plus, I believe, 2. Add on a d6 for bardic inspiration if it's oh. you rolling. Excellent. Yeah, uh, together uh, with the uplifting tune and Andre helping you and everything else, you guys get the wagon out of the mud and continue awesome. your journey. You move forward one space. Night approaches as you are covered in mud and muck. Uh, are you going to still stay at the river, or are you going to move across? What are you guys going to do? So, do you want to, like, wash ourselves in the river? That's, that might be an option. Yeah, because you know, we're covered in mud, you know? It'd be better to get it all off, you know? <laughs> if Emmy is fine, she was on the car all the time. Yep. <laughs> you guys also have spells that could help you in this. 
I don't. I have Firebolt. I can set everything on fire. Us. I don't have precipitation. What would be the point in saving the wagon? There we go. So I my... can cast Prestidigitation on you like six times in a row. And poof, 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 poof. Everybody's cleaned up. <laughs> yeah. Are you... Are you doing that? I don't know, am I? It's a good question. I mean, currently you're in the wilderness. So are you going to reveal to these people you know magic? Hmm. Yeah, you found me a, like, continuous or, like, thing of tapping out the tunes on the cart. And you, like, notice yourselves, like, a foot of yourself at a time getting cleaned off. Excellent. Okay. Uh, Jeffrey eyeballs your ferret up and down and shakes his head. Damn magic ferrets cleaning the clothes. All right. Uh, what are you doing that night? So, is Adron sort of aware that magic has been cursed? Uh, oh yeah, it's a verbal... Yeah, it's... Uh, let me make sure I press the digitation. Like, she's saying okay, so... cantrips and stuff, so it's not like... I'm trying to hide this. Yeah, Euphemia doesn't hide it. Yep. So during the night, Adron will be like, Oh, so you, you can use magic. That's very what? impressive. Euphemia tilts her head and looks at him. Magic? I don't know magic. I, I know tunes. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, wow. <laughs> Cause okay. and effect. Yeah. Cause and effect. Yeah. Yeah, she says, I know tunes. And then she taps out another one. Like a small puff of smoke appears. I see. Like that. See? Not magic. No. Yeah, sure. Um, okay. Uh, you're really low when you speak. Is there any way to turn up your mic? Me? Uh, uh, no, 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 no. Uh, not Christy. Uh, what's your name, man? Me, Karen. Uh, no, not you, uh, Christy. It means Chris. Uh, Chris. Oh, me? Yeah. Hey. I don't know if I can, really, to be honest. Oh, no. The, uh, uh, just make sure that you're close to the mic, or the... I assume you're on a laptop? Yeah. All right, so I'm going to get up here. There we go. My bad, y'all. Oh, uh, no, no worries, because we can barely... Or at least I can barely hear you. I can hear you. All right, there we go. Yeah. There we go. That's All a lot right. better. Yeah. All right, sorry about that. Uh, what were you saying? A lot. I forgot now. <laughs> okay. Uh, so nighttime approaches. What do you guys do? So uh, set up camp. Is it like still raining? Uh, currently, yes. Oh, it's been man, sprinkling. It's be set up camp, then. Yeah. Euphemia looks like increasingly sad as the rain just continues. Hmm. And if he spills, that will help us. Jeffrey takes his time to change his ba uh, bandages on his uh, bloody stump, and uh, he washes the wound in the muddy water of the uh, river. We're only another a week out, a few days maybe? Uh, yeah, uh, well, you're actually really, really close to it. You're almost on the outskirts. Mm -hmm. uh, you're really, really close. No barges still. Feels bad, man. Uh, the superstructure now looms over you uh, like a monument to a god. Awesome. Uh, despite the rain and everything else, you can still see this massive structure. Uh, that's one thing that is clearly, clearly visible in this landscape. All of this air pollution. Even with the rain, Even with the rain and everything else. Wow. Yep. It still glows mm -hmm. and bleeds. Emerald City. All right. Is it, is it? Do I have to be re-rolling every day? For this? Uh, every time that you travel, 
I mean, you guys can also be exploring these areas as well. I assume you're just following the river. You're not going off in side adventures or looking for anything. Get there as soon as possible. Excellent. Okay, excellent. Uh, so my assumption was correct. Okay, good. Uh, you guys wake up. There are no encounters as you cross the river. Awesome. Uh, go ahead and roll me a perception. Uh, Adron sees this the owl size. Excellent. Uh, you guys both see a barge coming back down the river. <sighs> the such odds. Oh my god. Alright, what do you guys do? You guys going to continue or. I, uh... I'm going to light a torch, I guess. And like try and wipe them down. Excellent. How are you keeping this torch dry in the drizzle? <laughs> it's great still difficulty, raining. I can see him. So I don't mind you using a, a firebolt cantrip just to light it, um, as long as it, Joffrey can see and stuff. Excellent. Uh, go ahead and roll me once again a Constitution as you're like trying to flag down these people. Is anybody helping? <laughs> Excellent. Don't even need any help, bro. Oh, Mudcap! Oh. oh, my bad. Excellent. I'm you did amazing. Oh, wait, wait. Sorry, I thought I got in trouble there. So what is it that you say, Mudkip, that draws the attention of this barge? Uh, we need help. <laughs> Excellent. Uh, so you Damn. hear the resounding crash of an anchor being lowered into the water. And you hear like men on board that calling out like, "Who goes there? What you need help with?" <laughs> My name is Adron, and this is uh, uh, we're we're traders, and we're, we're looking for passage to the city of Alkaline. There's like a slight delay, and like, well, the the city's right there. What you need help with? It's like it's a few days away. Yeah, it's. It, I mean, they're asking. You said we needed help, so they're asking what you need help yeah. for. Don't forget that these are well, busy traveling people on a barge who are stopping. Okay. We'll pay you good money. Uh, it's just this. Keep rain. Yeah. Okay, roll me a persuasion to get these people to help you. Is anybody Is helping? True? Yeah, I don't know if I did or not. I, I was just trying to figure out the persuasion one, how to roll. Okay. Uh, your sorcerer says you should have pretty good persuasion. I don't know if I did that correctly or not. Twenty to twelve. I will see your character sheet, and that is a plus plus two. So you currently have a fourteen. So working together, uh, you guys call out to them, and they're like, "You got gold? Yeah, we'll take money." Uh, you hear the cranking of like uh, roll boats being lowered down into the water, and you hear the splashing oh, and rolling. How the hell are we going to get a car on board? Uh, so uh, a rowboat comes out and says, uh, a man, pretty rough and gruff, uh, he's got a, a beard, and he's like, I am the captain of the ship. You said you need help, and you're willing to pay for passage. He like looks, up, uh, he looks at your, your, your crew, and uh, before this captain sees... Uh, Mudskip, is she using any spells? Uh, I don't believe she is. Okay, so humans are pretty racist towards other creatures. And you are a <laughs> born. Just a sec. We have. We have a blind man with an owl with a golden monocle on it. We've got a dragonborn, mm -hmm. a midget, and a guy with one. one uh, one-handed man. One-handed man. 
How the hell and, uh, does this look to child. this guy? So yeah, this, this him and his crew like kind of get out and like give a like a semi circle. Uh, the merlemen are still uh, in the boat, and like, so you're willing to pay? And he like looks the dragon board up and down. And he's like, Ugh. how much are you willing to charge? Says, well, it was going to be a couple of silver, but I see you got a wagon. Didn't say anything about hauling goods for you. Name of price. It's like, he like looks it up and he's like, what are you hauling? Um, what are we hauling? Got some leftover boar, some weapons that we, we're going to be taking into the capital. Your weapon merchants? I'm a or musician. Dragon honey. I mean, that's what it sounds oh, like. Oh yeah, we got the honey. Oh. Oh. Yeah, we got that. You give it's... us a keg of that honey ale, and we'll let you on. What do, what do we think? Okay, I'll, we'll huddle, huddle. Yeah, I'll, 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 I'll huddle. So you have ten kegs, right? Yeah. And he's af- asking for ten percent. So he's asking for one of the kegs. Oh, wow. That's, that's quite a percentage on that one. Mm. Uh, you can also do an insight here. <laughs> Should I go insight? Sure. With my... I'll be honest. Uh, yeah, this is a pretty reasonable deal. Uh, uh-huh. He seems to be a fair uh, trader. He isn't trying to scam you or anything like that. I mean, you guys are pretty close. Yeah. So he's just like he's a fair. He's a fair trade. Goods. I'm going to get me a keg of honey ale. And I just got all these three. Yeah. I'm okay. With that. Oh, he's four. That's all I got to do. Yeah. yeah. He's, he's saying like, yeah. I'll shake on that. He holds out his hand, and you shake, and he's like, "All right, boys, load them up." And he's like, looking at the wagon. He's like, "What are you going to do with the wagon?" I assumed you'd be taking the wagon on board. He like looks at the rowboat and he's like, <laughs> "My boys can make many trips with the kegs, but the wagon—that's not coming on board, son." Just be more white. He'll he'll haul product, but he's not going. <laughs> to... We. He makes money wa- through barges, not through wagons. If we, what if we float? If we take everything out of the wagon, could we float it across to the barge <laughs> with like a rope? I'm not sure that's how rivers work. So yes, uh, if this wagon is water sealed, and you roll an intelligence roll, <laughs> okay. okay, I'm going to be very clear here. Oh, wow. <laughs> if you succeed, the wagon will float. If you don't succeed, blah 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 blah. Okay. So they would want to assist me on this, uh, making sure it helps. Uh, Inspiration, maybe? Now, remind you, it cannot have anything in it, right? So it has to be an empty, floating wagon. Euphemia looks at it, it's like, yeah, that looks like it could float. <laughs> Thanks for the assist. <laughs> yeah. roll. How are you helping them? You have to be very specific here. On how you're helping. I'm just checking. You have to describe how you are assisting oh. Audrin and this engineering mechanics. mechanics and stuff like that. How are you helping? You sort of laying down the bedding it down with leaves or deflating the tires. I don't know. It's a wagon. Deflating the wooden tires. <laughs> I mean, yeah, sure, that makes sense. <laughs> but you know yeah. what we could do? We could take off the wheels, and then it'll be less weight. Yeah, that's one way to deflect them. <laughs> right, let's take off the wheels. Yeah. Let's see if that works. I'm going to use my intelligence now. Okay. Uh, yes. With all the extra weight and everything else, the wagon floats, and the barge <laughs> hooks it up to him. <laughs> Uh, the wagon's floating uh, about floating off to the side of it, but you guys all jump on board and easily make it to the docks of the city of Alkaline within a day. Wait, um, 
What happened to our horse? I mean, they oh. brought it on board. Okay. Uh, <laughs> horses they'll take, stuff like that, but they ain't going to take wagons. Wagons are just big old blocks, right? They're not going to... Yeah. You can get a horse on a rowboat, but I don't know if you can get a wagon. <laughs> uh, poor Applejack. <laughs> Uh, so the city of Alkaline appears. The rain is still drizzling, and uh, the city ports open up to you. It is a mass, massive structure uh, with Hellenistic style. Uh, you see massive uh, tribu uh, tribunes passing by you, warships and uh, uh, merchant ships coming and going along the coast. You're just this tiny little barge and this massive uh population that is seems to be coming and going uh you guys hook up to the dock and you see the captain nodding to both of you he's like nice doing business with you folks and you have a nice day he nods and replies and he says if you ever need anything and just ask i am oh i didn't catch your name i am oh. captain schmiel schmiegel schmiel i thought it was schmiel schmiel <laughs> <laughs> nice to meet you, Smeal. Uh, I'm Adjon. He like looks at you. He's like, even in the fog and stuff like that. He's like, you blind? <laughs> Wearing this blind. Uh, I am blind, like, but I have an owl, sort of a guide owl, to help me get around. He like shrugs and is like, okay, whatever. I've seen lots of shit. Why not? A blind sea now. Blind sea now. Mm -hmm. That makes a lot uh, of sense. Location and stuff. He doesn't get that at all. He's like... Uh, you hear some of the men like grumble on the boat and they're like, well, we'll, we'll see you later. Have a good one. And they take a, a roll, a, a, a keg of honey ale and roll it in the back. And you have nine... Uh, kegs of honey ale. So what do you do now? So let's go into the market, I guess. Excellent. Uh, yeah. Be the best thing. Wonderful. To the city of Alkaline we go. All right, just, did you say we got nine now? You have nine kegs of honey ale. I'm gonna make some money. Oh, boy. <laughs> There we go. We need to sell the boar jerk. The boar, man, it's hard to say. Boar jerky to compensate for the loss of the honey ale. Well, I mean, I don't think there's a dealer who we're sort of giving these to. It's just we're here to sell it. Oh, that's Make right. Make as we can. All right. Go ahead and place your tokens right here. Uh, right where, sorry? Right here. Awesome. Should have done starting area, but I forgot to do that. The city oh, of Alkaline know. opens up to you. It stinks and reeks of humans, but uh, humans. it seems a lot. Yep, of humans. Humans have a smell. <laughs> uh, you see trash, uh, garbage in the streets. This is clearly the docks where people just throw out their crap and it all gets washed down into the bay and docks. So this place. Doesn't smell good. You see a red light district. You see several uh, shops of exotic goods. Um, to the north, you see a temple dedicated to the Holy Master. Right here. Uh, next to that, you see several signs. You see the Iron Guild right here. You see the uh, shop called the Gems and Jewels, right here. You see another shop right here, Chains Workshop. Okay. Uh, right here you see the key. And then uh, right here, where's the other one? I already got that one. I already got that. And then the archway to the Holy Master, which I showed you at the very beginning. I don't know if it clicked for you guys. Uh, let's see, uh, also, uh, the land is slowly being elevated. You see these massive iron gates right here to the first level of the city. 
So this is where the common rabble uh, of the docks and uh, the unpious and unrighteous uh, come to uh, gather and go about their business. The dragonborns of the city, eh? No, there are no dragonborns uh, on the oh, city. Not that you, see. you might want to disguise self. Uh, it is a busy place. You see turn up uh, shops, you see uh, open food markets, uh, you see uh, wagons coming along. Uh, you also see sewers, massive structures, and guards posted at the sewers entrance. Where would you like to go? It's a okay, massive so location. Turning to Joffrey. Let's find someone so ill too, I guess. So, looking at Joffrey, is he like free to go now? I guess. Like, just, like, welcome to the city of Alkaline. So Joffrey like looks around. He's like, <clears throat> I, um, I, uh, he like gestures you guys to come close. And he takes you into like a back alley, and he's like, "I uh, I have business here. I need to uh, I need to go to uh, the slave market." The slave market. Yeah. Uh, Why do you need to go to the slave market? Um. Mm -hmm. uh, roll me a persuasion. Mm -hmm. Yep. Okay, persuasion. My left side of bones. Mm. Uh, so he's like, uh, I just need a slave. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Why did you say so? Yeah, I just need a slave. I mean, for the wrong, not, For an audience at home, he rolled a four. Um, four is a, a fail on I mean, try, him trying to ask uh, what's going on. Nothing wrong with having a slave or two. You see, this this dragonborn knows what I'm talking about. Mm. Uh, some pleasure of the flesh can actually be a you know a good release <laughs> every now and then. Uh, okay, yeah. Joffrey. Yeah. Have fun, I guess. He says, "I kind of need your guys's help. I hope you don't mind following me." Well, I mean, we're close, but we're not that close, Joffrey. Yeah, so, yeah he sounds kind of disappointed at this. He's like, "Oh, how about this?" <laughs> I'll help I'll you guys. You. Uh, this used to be my old stomping grounds when I was a rat catcher here. I'll help you guys out if you help me out. That's kind what, of what, shit. Is, it, is this the two with pleasures of the flesh? Because if, mm -hmm. if it is, I'm out. What, what's, I'm kind of the same way on that. Okay. So where do you guys go first? <laughs> Jeffrey seems to be uh, making a deal with you guys. I mean, are you agreeing with Jeffrey or are you not? I mean, we have like no idea who to sell ale to around here. Jeffrey, what what do you want us to do? Because if it's do with slaves, it's no. You're not making a good pitch here. Hey, 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 hey! You scratch my back, I'll scratch your back. You want a guide or not? You want a guide or not? <laughs> Phrasing, Jeffrey. Crazy. He seems to be hard bargaining here. He seems to be hard bargaining here. What do you guys do? I mean, you can try, attempt to nice. persuade him to be like, hey, you know. Like yeah. Yeah. Uh, what are you asking from us, Jeffrey? I just need you guys to, uh, well, first off, uh, I need to buy some fancy clothing. And I am willing to buy you guys fancy clothing as well. And you will be my... How would I say this? Uh, <laughs> Back up. Wingmen. You will be my wingmen. <laughs> okay. Like a regular Benson. So he's dressing up in fancy clothes, getting all spruced up, and then going to slave market. You can roll me a insight <laughs> on what's going on here. <laughs> he wants to be a pimp. It's Pimp Joffrey and his gang of thugs. Roll me an insight. See what it is. They say we'll be his wingman. I mean, having some fancy clothes sounds pretty cool. Yeah, it wouldn't hurt, I guess. Uh, so, yeah, you're like, oh, Jeffrey, you just want to be a pimp. He kind of, like, looks down and kind of frowns at this. Uh, yeah. Uh, you're pretty sure that your suggestion of him being a pimp, he disapproves of. 
Like that's not. It wasn't a suggestion. Yeah. All right. Well, uh, sure. clearly there, there's a plan here. There's a plot. Uh, but uh, he uh, seems willing to help you if you help him. I could use some new clothes, to be real. Honest. He, like, because... smiles at you and pats you on the shoulders. Like, there you go. There you go. <laughs> How about you, Mudskip? I could use a Dragonborn. <laughs> Uh, sure, why not? And he, like, looks at the child, and he's like, we don't need you, kid. You run over along to your mom and dad. She stares at him. And the ferret stares at him. <laughs> he is, he's looking at that ferret. <laughs> he's definitely looking oh, at yeah, that he's ferret. He's a racket. <laughs> and she slowly slides her hand down to her leg. Where you can see a... Uh, Concealed dagger and a strap to it. He's like, oh, I might have skills for you. Yeah. He like nods in approval. He's like, I ran into a couple of your kind in the uh, rat catching business. Actually, you and me you get along quite well. He like smiles. <laughs> like He's like, like your kind. I see. Yeah. Oh yeah. Uh, she was like a halfling. Oh, okay, happily. I get it. Yeah. She's a halfling, so he's just like, yep. Fair enough, this is Adam. He okay, just, that like, makes shrugs. sense. He kind of like <laughs> licks his lips. Like, ferret does not like Jeffrey. <laughs> uh, yeah. He doesn't like the ferret. You get that sense as well. <laughs> like, there's just something not right, exactly. All right, boys, which one's first? Sell the L. You have some stuff already. Get clothing so, or slave. Clothing. Clothes shopping. Yeah, let's go shopping. Sounds good to me. Yeah. He's like, the best way to get uh, clothing would probably be, he, like, looks around. Shopping. Best way to get clothing. I said the key. The key would be the best this place. Is so he takes the lead. Do you guys follow him? Yeah, okay. Sure, why not? I have some things I would like to sell to the clothes shop. All right. So uh, Jeffrey walks in. Uh, he kind of like takes his stump and sticks it in like his, his jacket, trying to hide the wound and everything else. Uh, is anybody else doing any preparations before going into the key? I might have. It's still raining. Oh, yeah. It's still yeah, drizzling. Yeah, it's still raining. Oh, oh yeah. It's springtime. Yeah, it's definitely yeah. still drizzling. No, last. Uh, I'm, I'm good. I'll maybe take down my hood as I go inside. Excellent. Any other preparations? Yeah. Nope, I'm good. Yeah, I'm good. Uh, so Jeffrey opens up the door and this gentleman in fine silks and uh, clothing comes up to you and says, Gentlemen and lady, uh, <laughs> welcome to my humble abode. You see fine <laughs> silks and uh, you see clearly sectioned off. You see commoners, uh, merchants, and then in the back, you see the fine lace and decor, and that's the noble section. He's like, I can simply direct you to uh, the commoners or the merchants. Uh, Jeffrey oh, pulls out a gold piece, and he's like, I'm here to get some nobility clothing. And he hands the piece and over, and the guy's like, thank you. Right this way, gentlemen. So he leads you over uh, to the uh, uh, nobility section of it. And Jeffrey's like, pick out the clothes that you want. Okay. Um, what sort of clothing are we looking at here? Sort of like uh, uh, silks. Like uh, in game, uh, you guys will describe it to me. And then in, uh, you will each get a noble's outfit in game context. How much do these clothing cost? Uh, Jeffrey's buying. Mm. Oh, sweet. Okay. Well, in that case. Euphemia wants a pink dress with a bonnet. 
Excellent. I only learn all A little bit of armor. So it wouldn't hurt to get something um, out. Something new, you know. Press. With a bonnet. Uh, I don't really know. Okay, what sleep. Like? What do you say? Okay, silk blindfold. Okay. It's like anointed with uh, prayers to the Holy Father. Holy Master. Yeah, why not? So it's yeah, still blindfold. Sound good to me. Uh, you're not blind. You will not oh, be able darn. to see through the silk. <laughs> I'll give it to the wizard then. Uh, what is uh, I'll give a cool like mud I'll give it to the blind? Person. Can I get a, like a cool vampire cloak? <laughs> <laughs> a vampire cloak. Okay. And I was shining a song. Anything else? Um, can I go to the shopkeeper oh. and ask him something? Oh my god. Uh, clothing first. Guy, clothing first. Okay. Uh, business before pleasure, <laughs> naturally. <laughs> Some cool boots, I guess. Uh, cool boots. Uh, what type of boots? Uh, horse riding. Horse riding. You just have armor. I don't know what else you need. Um, well, sort of... I don't think we can get healing herbs here. Like, this is mostly a clothing place, I think. Oh, can we get herbs here? Uh, no, this is a clothing shop, and this is a... Ah, uh, I told you. I was right. This is like clothing right, fabrics. You might be able to get some leather in the commoners section, but, uh, in high-end leather. Yeah, leather would be good. You would like leather? Tell me more about your, your outfits. Well, I just thought of that. Leather on scales. Uh, remember that that's in the commoners section. Yeah. So leather's oh, fairly common. And I'm I'm looking through to see what she has on her. What she has. Uh, so you will write down noble's outfit. I'm just asking what your character looks like. This is all aesthetics. Okay. Are you like uh, a cool belt? Yes. With a nice brass buckle. Uh, cool belt. Well, my clothing is cool. Shiny brass buckle. Doesn't look like she even has anything on. She's naked? Kinky. She should well, have armor. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's, that's what I'm, like, I'm, I'm reading her, seeing what all she has. Right. She won't have armor because she's a sorcerer. Oh, that's true. Sorcerers so yeah. it's probably a traveler's garment. That's what she's got. Hammock, clips and rags. It's saying her was She needs armor then, because she doesn't have any. So sorcerers aren't proficient in armor, so even if you had armor, you wouldn't be able to wear it. Well, you can't. Oh, okay. You just get disabilities and everything. You can wear armor, but you won't be able to cast magic. And everything hits you with an advantage, so it's like... It's the point. Um, there's, so there really ain't... No, is there even anything she can get? Uh, so what does she look like? Uh, what, does, what does her outfit look like on her? So she now has a noble's outfit. I'm trying to figure out how to describe this, apparently. Um, well, the way, like, from what she has here, like, look like she, it looks like she has armor on, but, it's, oh, man, I hate this because I'm not that good at describing things. Well, um, let's see here. She's green, right? So, yes. uh, a green vest? Green yeah, green cloak. Green cloak. Uh, some sort of hat. I don't. I don't think she has a hat. Okay, so no hat. That's fine. No, she doesn't have a hat. Can I get a, a wide-brimmed black hat? 
Uh, over your silk <laughs> blindfold? Yes, I guess you can call that. <laughs> Wide yeah, I'll, be, I'll be putting a little much on there. <laughs> I'm just putting all the clothing on. Hats. You know how hot you're going to be? Well, well the it's thing is she didn't... Oh, that is true. Yeah. Well, the thing is she didn't, she, did, she didn't describe what she has on. So I'm kind of <laughs> on, on like the end of my rope oh, here. Like trying to... Rings and stuff. Maybe yeah. jewelry? Or... Uh, tell me about the Dragonborn's custom. What does it look like when they get dolled up? Mm -hmm. I wish she was here to help me. Now, I don't <laughs> personally I don't really know much about Dragonborns. My character my character is, is not a Dragonborn, so I'm confused trying to do her character. Okay. You know? uh, because so... the one I have oh I'm oh I'm sorry, didn't mean to uh, we can just put down Noble's outfit, and then we're good. Okay. So, uh, right, we'll whether do... it's lace or dress or whatever, uh, it's good. All right. Okay. Uh, so Jeffrey comes out. Uh, he seems to be in a uh, uh, fur fur cloak, uh, a leather not leather but uh, black uh, was it vest and uh, black pants and high riding boots. Um, he kind of looks like Adrian. He's like, for a blind guy, you have good taste. Hey. Hey. Although he's got fur instead of other things. He says, gentlemen, are we ready? Um, One sec. I would like to talk to the shopkeeper if that's okay before we leave. Uh, the shopkeeper coughs and says, um, this is all very extravagant. How are you going to pay for this? So Jeffrey Thanks takes Jeffrey. the shopkeeper off to the side, and you see an exchange of currency. Uh, the shopkeeper says, uh, "If I if I am caught with this money, I'm dead." And he's like, "Well, melt it down, do whatever you need to do." And he's like, "I will not ask how you got it." You see, chink chink. And, That's interesting. Uh, <laughs> the shopkeeper turns to you and says, uh, "Gentlemen, is that all?" So, um, I believe. All right, I was adding that. Okay. I think I have some items that might be of value to you. Oh, I was wondering if you could appraise them. Interesting. Uh, yes. What do you have? So, I, I was investigating these ruins and I came across these uh, ancient garments. Some of them are made of silk. So, I thought maybe. They might be of value to you. Let me just copy and paste them. That was from uh, the so, uh, The shopkeeper's eyes fall upon the silver cloth gloves. And then, like, looks at him like, what is this? Where did you get this? Back. So, um, we were investigating these ruins and we came across this ancient, undisturbed sort of um, discovery and we were able to excavate them. So they're antiques, basically. Is there more? Uh, this is all we could find. So perhaps if we find more, we can come back to you. I will give you the full price of 25 gold pieces if you also give me the location of this place. Uh, and why would you be interested in this place? Well, normally uh, uh, artifacts of this nature are usually accumulative. Are they not? That's, that's a good point. So this was found sort of northwest of here, like a few weeks out. Is it northwest or is it north? Uh, so the shopkeeper like goes into the back and comes back with a map and lays it down before you. And because of your awesome, trustworthy skills of knowing exactly where you've been in the past month, yeah. do you give the shopkeeper the exact location? Uh, I mean, maybe not like the exact location, but sort of, Show him, like, I'll draw a circle. 
Go ahead and roll me a deception. See if you can pull this off. Uh, yeah, so the shopkeeper accepts this and gives you the full 25 gold for the silver cloth glove. Uh, you realize Funny, I've ever seen Amazing. Uh, very impressed. She seems, or he seems very uh, pleased. Like, this will fetch me a good price. I have been, I've only ever had one gold piece in my whole life. Yeah, this I is 25. 25 gold pieces. I'm rich. <laughs> uh, this is literally uh, 25 years of a normal person's income. I, uh, I can, I can retire. Yeah. Uh, you'd be living comfortably for at least 26 years, easily. On, of course, a, com a commoner's lifestyle. But yeah. Right, I'm, I'm done. What else did we come here for? The shop owner so, uh, rolls up the map and takes it back and says, Thank you for doing uh, me a great service. Sir, have a good day, sir. You too. Likewise. So, Jeffrey. Jeffrey about... uh, has like a fake hand now, uh, a wooden hand. <laughs> and uh, uh, he like looks at you and he's like, uh, are you ready to go to the slave shop? Um, sure. Are you going to explain to us exactly what you need us for or what? Uh, he says, uh, out of, out of earshot of the store, please. So he gestures outside, and the the store owner is like, uh, respects your privacy and goes back to uh, behind the curtain. And you guys step out into the raining mist, and we lost somebody. <laughs> yeah, it's been lost into the mist. Lost to the mist. Okay. Um, so the cart's uh, getting wet, and so is the L, but they are sealed. Uh, you see people it's running waterproof. from store to store underneath uh, uh, covers, uh, trying to avoid the rain. Uh, people actually look at you and says, oh, apologies, as they run by you, uh, trying to get out of the rain, seeing that you are now in finely dressed clothing. <laughs> It's fine, I'm just a, a blind nobleman. I mean, you are clearly sticking out. I'm just wondering how this, like, party looks. Like, do we have still have the casks and the, like, camping bags? Uh, yes, of course. But you're carrying those things, right? You're not dressed in those, right? Yeah. Right, so most of our supplies are on the, the wagon, which is pulled by... Oh, yeah, we still have the wagon. Okay. Uh, you notice that some of the uh, urchins uh, around the place are kind of eyeballing you up and down. <laughs> because I'm going to a wave. Uh, welcome back. Uh, they like wave back at you, and one of the kids run up to you and says, Please, sir, may I have a, may I have a copper? <laughs> okay. Uh, they're go with copper? Uh, please, sir, can I have a copper? I don't so have any asking... copper on me. Euphemia looks really sad at him. Uh, what do you currently have on you? Gold. Holy <laughs> shit. Yeah, okay. Yeah. So, I have copper. Okay. I'll give him two copper. Oh, bless you, sir. May the Holy per uh, Master protect you. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Uh, the child nods at the dragonborn that suddenly comes out of the shop. And Jeffrey's like, now that we are all here, uh, maybe. Can you wave at us? He's stuck. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, okay. Uh, every sword has to hide from other people because dragonborns aren't accepted. So the dragonborn like comes out of the shop and then like goes into the shadows. Uh, pausing for a moment. Uh, Jeffrey's like, okay, we now that I have... We could take a... A break? You want to take a break now? 
I was going to say it might be a good time for a break. Because okay. we're be sort nice. of getting close. <laughs> Sounds reasonable. Sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt. No, no, that's, I mean, this is like we're having technical problems and stuff like that. So it makes perfect sense. Uh, we're going to uh, pause here. And I will see you guys in the next episode. Hopefully we'll figure this all out. Uh, <laughs> and see you guys then.